On this third Sunday after Pentecost, as we observe National Occasion Sunday, we greet all of you in the name of Him who rules the nations, Jesus Christ our Lord. It's such a pleasure to welcome you to worship this morning, and we ask you to please sign the Ritual of Friendship pad that you find in each of your pews so we can get to know each other even better. Please note all of the announcements in your bulletin today about upcoming events celebrating our independence as a nation, particularly paying attention to the service that is held annually in front of the main hall at Salem College on Thursday, July 4th at 8.30 a.m. We are so excited about our upcoming joint VBS experience ROAR, which will occur July the 28th through August 1st here at Calvary. In partnership with Centenary Methodist, we hope to have over 150 children here for the week, and we do need your help as we prepare. You'll see a list of needed items in the bulletin today, and there are receptacles for those items in the west hallway, so we hope that you'll help us to fill up those boxes. Please also remember in your prayers Margaret Higgins, who sustained a fall this week at Salem Town as well as Ursula Pierce and Jack Messick, who are recovering after recent hospitalizations. Let us now worship our God together. stand together as we pray our liturgy for national occasions. Please stand. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. The earth is the Lord and all that is in it, the world and those who live upon it. 
Let all people everywhere know that the supreme God has power over the human kingdom and that he, that he can give it to anyone he chooses, even to the least important. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation's, nation whose God is the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Almighty God, ruler of nations, to whose grace we owe the manifold blessings of this land, we worship you with great hearts. We confess that in many ways we have turned aside from your commandments, and it is because of your steadfast love that we are not consumed. You offer us mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against you and have not obeyed your command to walk in your laws which you have set before us. Lord, have mercy on us and blot out our transgressions. We pray, Lord, that you will guide and bless all who are in places of authority, protect them from violence, and fill the hearts of the people with respect and love for them, because you have established their authority. Raise up for us leaders who will carry out your purpose and in patience and courage will depend on you. Save your people and bless your heritage. Make of this nation an instrument for the promotion of peace, freedom, and righteousness. May, may it be a haven for the oppressed of other lands, a home of happiness for all who dwell within its borders. And may our commitment to liberty and justice for all be preserved for generations to come. Hear us, gracious Lord and God. Guide us and our leaders to the spirit of Christ's love as we struggle with matters of teaching and learning, home and family, health and security, work and justice. Turn the hearts of all people to you that they may seek eternal life through Jesus Christ who redeems us and our world. Hear us, gracious Lord God. Grant wisdom to those who are of the family of faith. Enable us to accept the authority of government for your sake, ready for every good work, abstaining from every, every form of evil, and paying, paying to all whatever is due to them. As citizens of this nation, may we bring credit to our Savior in all we do. Hear us, gracious Lord. Grant to all people of this and all other lands a love of peace and order, that the nation shall learn war no more. Hasten the day when the kingdom of the world shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Hear us.
receive our offering this morning, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. we bring our gifts to you this day, O Lord, we give you thanks for the freedom that you have given us in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has freed us from everything in this world that could keep us from you and has given us the blessed hope of eternal life here and in the life to come. And for that gift of freedom, we thank you this day. And we pray that you will use us and that you will use our gifts for the work of your kingdom for peacemaking, and for the work of love in the world. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading today is found on page 481 in your pew Bible. Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. The word of the Lord, the he, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. 
For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood forth. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From where he sits enthroned, he looks forth on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Yea, our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let thy steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in thee. Our epistle lesson is Galatians 5, verse 1, and then verses 13 through 25, and that's found on page 1015 in your pew Bible. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but but through love be servants of one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk in the Spirit, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to to prevent you from doing what you should. But if you were led by the Spirit, you were not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are plain, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 21 verses 15 through 22. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings Thou hast brought forth perfect praise. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. In the morning, as he was returning to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but leaves only. And he said to it, May no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and never doubt, you will not only do what has been done to this fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please. Be 
Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children to join me for a few moments. How is everybody? Well, tell me how your summer's going. Good. Have you got all kinds of activities you're doing? Anybody going to the beach? Yeah. Anybody going to Laurel Ridge? Yeah. All kinds of things. Um, when I go to the beach, one of my very favorite things to do is to sit out on the balcony and look out to the ocean and to watch for dolphins. Have you ever done that? No. Um, where we go at the beach, normally if you sit long enough at one part of the day, you'll see some of the dolphins. And they'll jump up, and they'll go in the water, and they're sort of playing with each other, and they're jumping. Um, I keep this in my office because a friend gave this to me a long, long time ago, this little dolphin. And one of the things I love about watching dolphins is they seem so free. Free. That's the class if you want to pass it around. What does freedom mean? What does it mean to be free? Eddie? You can maybe do stuff without asking, yeah? What else? You're out somewhere and you're allowed to go anywhere you want, right. Do you know that there are some places around the world where people are not free and they can't do what they want to do and they may not, along with that, they may not have the things they need, like they may not have enough food, they may not have clothing, they may not have a place to live, and they may be living in places where maybe the government is not so nice and they're afraid. And one of the things that is really wonderful about where we live is we have freedom, but with freedom comes responsibility. And when we have responsibility, that means we have to help make other people free. So as we think about our freedom in Christ and our freedom here, one of the things we have to remember is to pray for and to help the people who are not free to share what we have. Okay? Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you that we are free in you, that you have made us that you love us and that we belong to you. And we remember today our brothers and our sisters in our own country and around the world who may not have some of the things that come with freedom and help us to remember our responsibility to help them as we think about our own freedom. Amen. Thank you for coming. have the opportunity now to pause in our, in our day and in our week and turn to God as the body of Christ. So let us do that now. Let us pray. God, we come before you this morning and we pray now in the name, in Jesus' name, for the church, for the world, and all of those who are in need. God, we know that you are a holy God, that you are a God of healing and peace, and we thank you for life and health. We thank you for mornings and evenings. We thank you for rain and for sun, for all that you give us that sustains life. But most of all, God, we thank you 
we thank you for Jesus who died and rose again to make real the promise of new life in you. So God, now we ask. We ask for a church that ministers every day to bring people together in your name. God, we pray for hearts that will not judge, for minds that recognize injustice and oppression in all of its forms. And God, most of all, we pray that our, for hands that are open to answer your call. Merciful God, the nations that you have called into being are many and full of marvels. So we pray for their well-being, for leaders and for workers, for teachers and soldiers, for scholars, artists, parents, and peacemakers. God, we pray for the nations and people in strife that your way may be known in all the lands and that your joy and your peace may reign. So turn our hearts, O God, to respect and honor those who are not like us. Let us see the peoples of every nation and the majesty of your desire for richness and difference. And God, we turn to you as a God of healing. And we pray for the healing of bodies and spirits. For all of those who are in pain, for those who are awaiting surgery, for those who are recovering from surgery, for those who are struggling with physical therapies, for those who are near to death, and for those we name now in our hearts. And God, we ask for a special blessing on all the children in our communities. For their play and work in this summertime, give them strength and renewal. For an ever-increasing opening of their minds to new ways of seeing. To understanding the gifts that you call them to use. For happiness and health. And we give you thanks for the saints who have taught us how to listen to your word, how to answer your desire for our lives, and how to teach us to proclaim your love to others. So God, into your hands we place our prayers, and we entrust all of these petitions to you. So bless them and all, and all who are in need. And let them know that they can come to you. So in thanksgiving for all that you give us, we pray this in the name of our God and our Savior. Amen. <laughs>
In our time together this morning, Lord, may nothing but your word be spoken, and may nothing but your word be heard. For we ask this in the name of Christ, the living word. Amen. Well, the 2020 race for the White House is off and running. Candidates have announced, campaigns are underway, and what will continue as an endless string of debates began this week. I must confess, as I'm sure many of you will join me, that I'm not looking forward to the next 16 months in our political life as a nation. Perhaps many of us would feel differently about the upcoming campaign and even want to be more engaged in our political discourse if there was a more respectful diversity of views and if our disagreements over issues did not escalate to personal attacks upon one another. I will tell you that as a Christian I am gravely concerned about our children and our youth who both hear and observe the bad behavior of leaders of all political persuasions who are supposed to be role models of integrity, moral, ethical, and decent behavior. Debate and respectful political discourse are at the heart of a democratic form of government. Our founders ensured that we would have that basic right. But with that right comes the responsibility to be respectful and to model for others what citizenship really means and how we are called to work together despite all of our differences for the common good of our nation and for the peoples of the whole world. Is it any wonder then that some citizens in our nation become so disillusioned with what they observe in our political process that they may feel a sense of hopelessness and wonder in their hearts if anything will ever really change? Now on this weekend before we celebrate July 4th on Thursday, the day our nation declared its independence in 1776, Psalm 33 brings to us a message of great hope. It was thought to be a hymn that was actually sung by the ancient Hebrew people. And the psalm is clear in proclaiming God's reign, even amid persons and circumstances that might deny it. God's rule, the psalmist says, is something to be celebrated with praise and to be awaited with fervent hope. Simply stated, God rules the world. Psalmist illustrates that. He says, by God's word, he created the skies and the starry multitude by the breath of his mouth. His character, the psalmist said, is one of steadfast love and faithfulness for all the peoples of the earth. God loves justice and righteousness the psalm seems to proclaim that old spiritual that we've heard over and over again. He's got the whole world in his hands. Yes, he's got the whole world in his hands. He does. So these are words of hope. 
as we watch the nations banter back and forth over various issues, as violence continues to erupt in the Middle East, as issues of immigration and trade and denuclearization and climate change and poverty and hunger and health care are real for us and for all the peoples of the earth, the psalmist brings us words of real hope that the God who is enthroned in the heavens, the God of steadfast love and mercy, is working out His sovereign purposes. Even when everything seems chaotic, when it seems like everything is ripping apart at the seams, God is still in control. That's the hope that the psalmist brings to us as we celebrate our nation and our responsibility to be partners on the global stage. God is sovereign. And like that beautiful Christmas hymn reminds us, He rules the world with truth and grace. Listen to what else the psalmist declares. The Lord overrules what the nations plan. He frustrates what the peoples intend to do, but the Lord's plan stands forever. Hopeful words, aren't they? When we wonder sometimes if peace will ever come to the earth, if violence will ever end, if justice will ever flow like the waters of the sea for the oppressed peoples of the earth. Even the most sophisticated plans of humanity, the best efforts at negotiation, even the greatest creative brilliance for solving the world's problems are nothing when stacked against the plans and purposes of a sovereign God who rules the earth. And in a world where we think we are secure because of our military power and armaments, the psalmist is clear. Kings are not saved by the strength of their armies. Warriors aren't rescued by how much power they have. One commentator says it well. We forget that God rules the world and we don't. Instead of praising God for His majesty, our first inclination is to congratulate ourselves. But Psalm 33 reminds us that the things that seem so powerful, politicians and armies and weapons, are exposed in the light of God's rule to be mere illusions. The real power behind the universe, behind human history and personal existence is the steadfast, enduring love of God which the psalmist says fills the whole earth. So... <coughs> Very hopeful words the psalmist brings us as individuals and a nation when we celebrate our independence. Wondering if things will ever change in Washington and around the world. But there's much more in this psalm than a call to passive waiting for God to act in the future. There's also a call to us, the people of God, to somehow emulate or model God's character to participate with Him in helping to make the world a better place, a place that He created it to be. The psalm is clear in its description of God. Listen to what the psalmist says. God is upright and all that He does is done in faithfulness. He's just, He's merciful, He's full of steadfast, enduring love. So to be upright means that God has this rock-solid, upfront integrity, genuine, honest, just. And listen to these words. This struck me pretty powerfully this week. If God is described as upright, that suggests that God's people are to derive their identity from Him. In other words, as Christians, we can't just sit around waiting and hope for God to change the world. We have to join Him. We have to imitate Him. We have to derive our identity from Him so we live 
and reflect the values that He has given us and not the values of the world. I think that's exactly what the psalmist means when he says, Blessed or happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, whose citizens seek to live as a reflection of God's character. And what is God's character? God certainly isn't self-serving. He doesn't waver in His love for us and for the earth. We can count on Him. He's fair. He's just. He's impartial, forgiving, merciful. And not only does He care about a vast global world He's created, He cares about every individual person. Listen to what the psalmist says. The Lord looks down from the heavens and He sees every human being. From His dwelling place, God observes all who live on earth. So though He's sovereign and majestic and vast, He cares deeply about each one of us, about every child that He has created. Now it's been said by various historians and scholars that even though the founders of this nation never intended to form a state religion like they had experienced in England and in other lands, this nation was founded upon the moral and ethical principles found in the Judeo-Christian tradition. I take that to mean that while we do practice religious freedom in America, there are still some basic principles. There are things we find in both the Old and New Testament that have influenced our national values. And one of those things we find clearly in this psalm, God's care for His people. So that being said, a nation is blessed a nation is happy. A nation is doing what God would have it to do when it puts the interests of people first. Isn't that what our founders meant in those beautiful opening lines of the Declaration? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that all are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And though the founders themselves had various religious ideals, some were even deist, there was one thread that ran through all of their writings, the belief that each of us have been created in the image of God, and because of that, our nation should be characterized by a concern for the individual liberty and welfare of all God's children. I heard a quote once that has struck me through the years. And I googled it. <laughs> and scholars aren't sure if it came from Alex de Tocqueville who took a tour of America or if it was President Dwight Eisenhower. But the sentiment of the quote is as relevant today as when it was first said. America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. I believe the goodness that has characterized America comes from its Judeo-Christian foundations found in the Old and New Testaments which has provided us with a moral and ethical compass. It is that foundation which influenced the Founders' passion for liberty and justice for all of God's people. It's that foundation, care for the life, liberty, and happiness of all God's children that has always characterized our nation and has separated it from the nations that practice despotism and tyranny and suppress the basic human rights of all God's children. Regardless of political persuasion, whatever that may be for any of us, or our individual stance on the critical issues that face our nation in its 243rd year of independence, 
one thing must unite us if we are to be a nation blessed by God. We must first seek to live by God's values. To do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And to do all that we can by the expression of our own opinion, by voting, by being active citizens, to ensure that this nation continues to preserve the human rights of all God's children, both at home and abroad. This emphasis, which is articulated in today's psalm, will keep our nation good. Some have characterized the divisions we see in our nation today as being similar to the 1960s when war raged in Vietnam or like the struggle our nation faced at the time of the American Civil War. Whether those comparisons are correct, I cannot say. I'm not a sociologist. But I do know this. The only way out of our divisions, whatever they are, will come when we first honor God and then follow Him by working together to solve the many critical issues that are before us. It's interesting to me that above the entrance to the Senate chamber in Washington and above the speaker's rostrum in the chamber of the House of Representatives, we find these four words. In God, we trust. Blessed is the nation, the psalmist said, whose God is the Lord. So the question before us all as we celebrate our independence this week is to search our hearts and to ask ourselves rather pointedly, do my actions as a citizen do the actions of my nation show what we claim as our motto? That our trust is in the God who calls us to care for all people. It was March of 1865. America was one month away from the end of a brutal and bloody civil war waged over the issue of human slavery. In a period of just four years, 620,000 Americans died on the battlefields of war. Acres of land lay in ruin. Homes were destroyed. Families were divided and in shambles. The nation collectively was grieved, tired, worn from a long and painful struggle. Abraham Lincoln had been reelected to a second term as president. The Washington Evening Star reported that the weather the day of his inauguration seemed to be much like the mood of the nation that had been under the dark cloud of civil war the reporter wrote, the day opened rather disagreeably with a combination of drenching rain and drizzling and heavy wind. And the reporter even joked that the police were careful to confine everyone to the sidewalks who could not swim. Many who witnessed the event that day were struck by the good omens that eventually were seen in the weather that morning. Accounts vary as to the exact timing of the sun's appearance, but observers noted that while Lincoln gave his address and took the oath of office, the clouds parted. And the sun shone brightly on the ceremony. Lincoln's secretary, John Nicolay, wrote, Just at the time when the president appeared on the east portico to be sworn in, the clouds disappeared and the sun shone out beautifully all the rest of the day. Michael Schreiner, an African-American laborer at the Washington Naval Yard, recorded in his diary, 
Before Lincoln came out on the porch to take his oath, the wind blew and rained without intermission, and as soon as Mr. Lincoln came out, the wind ceased blowing, and the rain ceased raining, and the sun came out, and it was as clear as it could be. It was in the sunshine of a new day, as a bitter war was about to conclude, when a divided nation needed somebody, somebody, to call them back together. Lincoln spoke these immortal, I would even say divinely inspired words. They are words that we need to hear today because they embody what it means to be a nation blessed by God. With malice toward none with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive to finish the work we are in to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and for his orphan and to do all that will achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. With malice toward none. Reliance upon God to see what is right. Caring for the individual. Working for peace beginning in our own community. This is what has made America good. And with the prayerful work of all God's people striving together to live as God would live. Placing our trust in Him and not in the worldly powers that will always disappoint. Let us celebrate our independence with hope. Celebrating together the last words of today's psalm. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help. He is our shield. Our heart is glad in Him because we trust in His holy name. Let Your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us because we hope in You. Let us pray. O God, we pray for our nation. We pray for all of our leaders. We pray for all the peoples of our nation and all the peoples of the world that you love. Continue to use us as an instrument of peace and justice and reconciliation and love. That this world may be what you intend for it to be. For we ask these things in the name of your Son who died to save the world. Jesus Christ. Amen.
now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.